Hi friends, this is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing. And if you caught my video a while back, I mentioned that I have the caterpillar crop and I did not follow the instructions and I damaged the blades. So I reached out to the company, read all the Q&A. Uh, my friend Noni helped me and a lot of you said, don't give up on it because I was just gonna set it aside. And I got replacement blades. And they came in this nice big box because you get the big long one and the actual rotary blade. I reached out and just confessed to them, look, I didn't follow the instructions. I used too many sheets of paper at once. If you have this cutter, just use one piece of paper at a time. And there's something in the instructions about not cutting chipboard. I didn't cut chipboard. I used 110 pound cardstock and tried to cut too many card bases at once. So don't do that. Then I forced it. Don't do that either. So if you have to get replacement blades, what I will tell you is this thing is disgusting and should not be in my craft room. Can you see that? It's, it's oily in here. Like there is some sort of liquid, like they've coated it with WD-40 or something. So what I'm going to do is we are already in my craft room and we are already filming and you can kind of smell it too. Like it smells like it should be in the garage, not the craft room. So I'm going to take this bag, put it directly in the trash. As paper crafters, the last thing we want is WD-40 or something on our counter, right? I don't know. I'm kind of tempted to wash it before I put it on there. Is that weird? I don't know if I'm supposed to do that. But I'm going to clean it off really well. I have uh, a rag here and some Kleenex. And I'm looking at the way it goes on and checking that side. Okay, so when you speak to the company, they consider this a blade and this thing. You and I would traditionally just think the thing that rolls back and forth. But when she asked me about it, I know that this is damaged too. It's not smooth. Now, to take this thing apart, if you have to do this, the trick is get a, like a little bowl maybe, and have all the stuff together. Because I started taking this apart the first night, and then looked at everything, and you know, I know there's a lot of parts. Okay, so this is my new blade. So first and foremost, before we get any farther, I'm gonna take a Sharpie. And I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna put an X on that one. That's the old one. And an X, I don't know for sure. Oh, see, I thought I would have to take this apart, but they send you this whole cartridge. Interesting, okay. And then I'm gonna put an X on that. So we know the ones with the X's are the bad ones. I'm gonna set this down right here. And mm, I was gonna say it comes with instructions. It doesn't. You can look online. I think that's where I looked before and it'll tell you how to take it apart. So I need, I'm trying to look and show you. Okay. I need a flathead. This device requires almost everything because it has a Phillips and it has, what are those called right there? The little hex nut things and flatheads. So first we're going to take our flathead screwdriver and we're going to take apart, I'm gonna unscrew these very end items, okay, from right here. Mine was already loose because I had done it before. Then this bar lifts out. I'm gonna just lay the bar down with this screw because right now we're gonna take off this plate. So we need to unscrew, I have one Phillips so I'm hoping it's a good size. It is not a good size because the end's really pokey. I'm gonna go get a different one. It's a pretty big screw. So I really need, there we go, that's a better one. So we need to get this metal plate off of here. And I think what I might do, because I'm so hard on things, is I might just set these out in the shop as my backup backups. I can't imagine what I would want to cut and not have a clean edge, but I don't know. I think I'll save them for a little while just to be sure. Okay, so I'm setting all of my screws down carefully. And because I took this apart a while ago, 
because I was trying to figure out how it all worked. Because they kept asking me if I wanted both blades and I didn't know what that meant. But since I took it apart, I kind of have an idea of how it goes. Okay, now we took off four screws. Now we're just going to put this one right in here, this new one. And the, the holes aren't right in the center. So it's pretty obvious which way it has to go from where I'm sitting. Does that make sense? The holes aren't centered. So the screws go closer in. That's the way the other one came off. That's the way this one's going to go in. And I just need to be careful. You know, this doesn't take a lot of muscle or anything. You just need to be careful not to cross thread because we want to be able to slide a sheet of paper over that. So it has to be all smooth and nice. Not like when you're putting together gate hardware or, I don't know, something out in the garage. You know, you screw a hook in the wall. You don't care. Probably shouldn't do this right after you get a new manicure, huh? Okay, this one is giving me some, it's not um, going in nice, it's kind of cross-threading. So I'm just going to slow it down, straighten it up. I'm just trying to get them all a little bit in there. There we go. I'm going to loosen this one. Oh, it is loose, so okay, that's not my problem. I thought maybe I had um, bound it in a weird way. Yeah, this, this one's giving me trouble. Okay, well, I have some gunk on my screwdriver, too. That could be part of it. And they're inset, so they go down below. They've made a nice little groove for the screw to go down in. So let's see if this one will behave. I don't know what this one's problem is. It's just not straight. Sorry, guys bumped you, didn't I? Well, the problem is you're in the way and I can't see. <laughs> this does not feel right. Oh, well, it probably doesn't help that I'm not using the good screwdriver. I'm using the one that's all bent up on the end. There we go. That makes a better difference. That other one is just kind of damaged and crooked. Okay, now it seems like it's a little bound, like it's tight, but I don't know what's holding it tight. That one's not. Okay, I just want to make sure that this screw will go down below the plate. And it did. I mean, it doesn't look very straight to me, but it's not sticking up. I may have damaged it before when I took them on and off. So I think the real trick with a paper cutter is a piece of paper. Okay, it doesn't stick up at all. That envelope doesn't snag. It does still feel a little bit gross. And it could be that it's on my hands too. See? Coming off black and gunky. Not really sure why you would send me a paper craft item like that. And it was not like that when I first bought the cutter, just to be clear. It came clean and nice. So you don't have to worry about that. Okay, there. And I think what I'll probably do is I'll be careful and I'll get out uh, a paper towel and then maybe just use some pieces of scratch paper for my first cuts to be sure that they're nice. Now, this just comes right off this pole. This is our blade, right? Comes right off and we put this one back on, okay? And I think the trickiest part of this is when you're doing this blade, be careful about how you unscrew them and screw them back together because this one, you know, it's plastic under there and, and I maybe was hard on it before. Okay, now this has a end. So I took this out. One end goes back in this bracket right here. And then the other end 
goes in this bracket and then the screw will go in it and hold it there. Okay, so this one you set it in this little ridge. Set it in the ridge. And you know you've got it lined up right because there's a little bar that goes down there. And then be careful with your blade. Set your blade down carefully on the outside of the rail like it should be. Grab your fancy little screw. And this one has a flat head on the end of it. So I can finger tighten it. And then I'll get my flat head screwdriver. I have a whole bunch of screwdrivers sitting here because I remembered that it took a lot, but I couldn't remember exactly which ones. And I'm just tightening it up a bit, but I'm not cranking on it. I have a hold of this bar with my hands. Then when it's tight, there we go. So it rattles in the top. It always did. The thing moves back and forth. Let's see how I did, you guys. Let's see how I did. Oh, I did pay $18.99. So I paid $15 for the blades plus shipping. And I think, you know, if it's a faulty thing, they pay for it. Oh, there we go. We're back in the game. Look at that beautiful cut. It was crisp or crinkled up messy paper and it still made a beautiful cut. That's beautiful. Okay. So I think my caterpillar crop is fixed. I can make card bases with it again. And so if you don't follow the instructions, which you absolutely 100% should follow the instructions, but if you don't, then contact the company. The Q&A information is on their website. And what you do is you email them and say, this is my situation. And then they came back and asked for my information. And I, the, they send you an invoice and you pay through PayPal. Okay, they emailed me the invoice and then paid through PayPal. They were pretty quick. I didn't keep up on my emails and so then I was like, I wonder where my cutter is. And then I realized I hadn't actually uh, paid the bill. They were super nice about it. I do like this cutter, but what I think I'm going to try and do, those of you who watch my channel a lot are going to laugh, I'm going to try and make a spot somewhere on a counter in my craft room so that this can always sit out. because. It's a little heavy to lift up and down for me to bend down and get it out of a cupboard. And you're not supposed to carry it around by this bar. So you're, the instant thing is to think, okay, this is a handle. This is not a handle. And so you have to pick it up with two hands and it's a little wobbly. So you wanna be careful. So I am gonna try and make a spot on my counter. And then to get the benefit of 12 by 12, I'm gonna have to have a spot where I can leave that arm out. I don't know. We'll see. It might just get buried. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. And I hope that you aren't watching this because you messed up your caterpillar crop. Bye-bye.